Whether you're on Anadrol or just a natural guy lifting probably too much weight for his ego to even withstand, nosebleeds can be a very common thing, especially if you are lifting heavy ass weights. It's kind of a desirable thing for some people. It's actually like a thing that people try to do and usually publicize. You have Larry Wheels posting all the time about him getting nosebleeds on exercises where he is lifting weight that you or I would just absolutely break with personally at least this is myself i have cerebral palsy so i'm special and disabled you know but he is dripping blood profusely out of his body gnarly daddy chill and eddie hall notoriously lifted this heavy ass lift and nose blood started spewing out of his face as well just really gnarly stuff when it comes to uh lifting these heavy weights and it is it good probably not right we can assume that if your body's bleeding it's probably a male adaptive response to the training you're doing it's not a good thing but it is an ego driven thing people like to see their nose bleed because it's a representation that they are working hard they're creating a lot of pressure they're moving weights that are sort of inhuman in terms of what normal people can do this pressure created during the workouts that can cause nosebleeds is kind of a canary in the coal mine, especially for someone who has pre-existing heart conditions, hypertension, tachycardia, things that really impede circulatory function within the human body. Now, we actually just discussed a 19 year old who passed away because of a heart attack due to likely what was drug abuse and bodybuilding. Today, we have a 22 year old woman in Mexico who had passed away from doing barbell squats. And contrary to what you might think, she was not on any kind of drugs. This young lady had actually passed away, collapsed on the floor after doing a barbell squat at a high altitude. She suffered from a stroke and several blood clots from what was to be assumed is likely anoxemia. According to local officials on August 22nd, 2024, she suddenly collapsed on the floor during her strenuous workouts. Although paramedics were quick to rush the scene, she was pronounced dead shortly after they arrived. Some information has come forth on her mysterious passing. A spokesperson who represents the attorney general's office shared an autopsy, revealing that the deceased suffered from a condition called anoxemia, which occurs when there is too little oxygen in the blood. Upon the findings, some have suggested that her death could have been caused by overexertion. In addition, it was discovered that she suffered from a stroke and blood clots. Some have suggested, including doctors, that Mexico's high altitude could have contributed to the incident. While I think there's some good merit to this thought, and there probably is some connection to the altitude and a strenuous workout, I think there's also probably a lot more to the story that we're not talking about in this specific article that you could really find as a useful tool, especially to protect yourself from further health incidences such as this one. I don't want to stroke while I'm in the gym. I don't think I want to stroke at all. I'm pretty sure you don't either. So what did she do that could have caused this? She's 22, relatively healthy, good body composition, not something that would be concerning. Yeah, what's going on? Cool. Uh, I'm just at the Walmart pharmacy right now. And, um... A client called me, and I don't even remember what I was talking about, to be honest. I <laughs> uh, It was something in regards to fuck. Yeah, the thing I was trying to convey is that I think she was likely doing something else that could have been a causal factor to this issue, which is the notorious thing that a lot of young people of this generation typically do, which is abuse pre-workout. An abundance of caffeine can be a vasoconstrictive molecule. Above, above somewhere around 300 milligrams seems to be where certain cerebral blood flow is constricted. Key word, cerebral blood flow is restricted. And in these instances, people who use high amounts of caffeine can actually increase blood pressure, increase heart rate, and constrict blood vessels. Super, super not great if you are going to be lifting some heavy, heavy weight and need to respirate muscles, respirate your brain and many other organ tissues. And this video is being made in an attempt to tell you that maybe pre-workouts aren't the best tool for you in your arsenal, especially if you're someone who is already enhanced. I typically recommend to stay away from caffeine or caffeinated products outside of a morning coffee or two and an enjoyable drink in the afternoon if you're on some kind of weekend getaway or some shit like this. But the 300 milligram plus pre-workouts that people take on top of having the coffee and monster out the day, but the 300 milligram plus caffeine pre-workouts, plus the monster that they had an hour before, plus the coffees that they had in the morning, plus the Red Bull that they had at work that morning as well, are not good. I know many people who have easily overdone caffeine and had multiple grams per day without even realizing it because they just consume it so much on a daily basis. And it is a risk factor 
for things like strokes, for things like blood clotting, especially if you cause an excessive amount of vasoconstriction in cerebral vasoconstriction. This is something that a lot of people need to be very cautious of, but it seems to go to the wayside because a pre-workout seems so innocuous or not harmful, and thus they just abuse the shit out of it. Imagine that, people abusing something because it seems innocuous. We hear this all the time on this channel and in many other places on the internet. It is not a good thing. And if you're going to need a pre-workout, my typical recommendation is something that is much, much, much less invasive and physiologically manipulative, which is something like a nootropic. Alpha GPC is a great compound using it at 600 to 1200 milligrams pre-workout could be a really good tool to increase cerebral function and more importantly to create drive and specific focus while at the gym, especially if you've had a long day. Other things that go on to the little bit of the realm of not natty would be things like Nupept, Methyl Blue, which is something I'm currently experimenting with, Cerebral Lysin, and, and many, many, many more. I think nootropics are going to be the way of the future when it comes to stimulants that are non-invasive and don't manipulate cardiac physiology because again they think their safety profile is actually much better and you could consequentially say that their health effects long term are much better as well since they promote cognitive function and prevent cognitive decline something which caffeine might do but in the presence of overdosing caffeine we see that that is quite not the case in fact it's very deleterious for cognitive function if you enjoyed this video comment down below and tell me what you think do you abuse caffeine if you do what do you how much do you use just tell me rip the band-aid off if you like this video comment again subscribe this helps me tremendously get pushed into the algorithm because the youtube gods hate when you are not in the algorithm and the only way that they know to put you into the algorithm is apparently when people click like subscribe and even hit that bell button it's free to do and it helps me massively and continues my availability to make these videos and be an absolute maniac in front of you every single day other words i will see you in the next one